Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. What happens to Bitcoin after all the Bitcoin is mined? Or asked in another way, what is the point? What is the incentive for anyone to add a block to the blockchain if they're not going to receive a mining reward? By 2140, all the Bitcoin will be mined. No more rewards. But even by 2040, 99% of the Bitcoin will be mined already. So what is going to incentivize people to continue to secure and add onto the blockchain? And the most likely answer, the one that people in the Bitcoin community believe has the best possible chance of occurring is relying on transaction fees. And this comes directly from the Bitcoin white paper, directly from Satoshi Nakamoto. And in the paper, it says, quote, once a predetermined number of coins have entered circulation, the incentive can transition entirely to transaction fees. So a lot of people have a problem with this. How can it rely on just transaction fees? Well, as the network becomes larger, the demand for block size increases and people are willing to pay higher transaction fees to get their Bitcoin transaction onto the blockchain. And if you think this doesn't happen or it can't happen, or you think it's only a theory, it already did occur and it happened in 2017 as Bitcoin reached its all-time high of almost $20,000 and people were competing. There was demand for block space. They were willing to pay super high transaction fees, $15, $25, $28, even up to $38. And the reason why people are willing to pay such a high fee on the Bitcoin blockchain, because relative to the other cryptocurrencies or other blockchains, Bitcoin is the most secure. And this is probably the most important part about Bitcoin, it's security, but it also is, it has simplicity and it's also very liquid. So if we were to get to a point in 2140 where Bitcoin relied on fees only, and this is how the people or the miners adding blocks to the blockchain were being compensated, what kind of fees are we talking about? So I have a fee calculator in front of me and it shows that if we reach by 2140 a market cap of $10 trillion, the estimated median transaction fee would be about $8. And if we get to a market cap of $100 trillion, the median transaction fee might be $82. So you see between $8 and $82. And this might sound like a lot of money. It might sound like a very expensive fee, but it's really not. And you're going to understand by the end of this video why it's very cheap. So if we ever did get to this point where Bitcoin did have these fees of $8 or $10, of course, Bitcoin won't be used for daily purchases. And already today, in May of 2020, it's already not being used for daily purchases. People don't buy a cup of coffee or buy a slice of pizza with Bitcoin. It's used as a store of value or for a big purchase, maybe for a house, maybe for a car. So some of the ideas or the theories in the work is that if Bitcoin were to be this large store of value for big purchases only, then you might be able to make a small Bitcoin transaction on the Lightning Network, which is a scaling solution off-chain being built on top of Bitcoin. But let's say Lightning Network doesn't work out. Then it's more like that in the future, as Bitcoin, if it's around then, and it's being used for high fees, store of value, large transactions, we might use another cryptocurrency or maybe another altcoin for that daily purchase of a coffee or a slice of pizza. But this is the beauty about Bitcoin. It always will be profitable. And the reason is, every two weeks, the difficulty adjustment can change. So if the network notices that there's not a lot of miners on the network because it's not profitable, so they leave the network, the difficulty adjustment decreases. And then Bitcoin becomes profitable again. So even if it costs you know $100,000 you put in to add a block, you might get back $105,000. You're profitable. But it could even get to a point where you put in $5 and you get back $15, so you're always profitable. But the danger of having a network that the prices are too low, for example, you put in $5 and you get $10 back, is that the hash rate will be too low. And the hash rate symbolizes the security of the network. The higher the hash rate, the more difficult and the more expensive it is for someone to perform a 51% attack or hack the Bitcoin blockchain. Today in May, 20, May of 2020, we're at all-time high for hash rate, 122 million terahashes per second. And most people believe that we are way over secure. Even if we go back to 2017, 
when Bitcoin reached 20,000, when people are paying transaction fees of $30, it was between three to six terahashes per second. So, and even at that time in 2017, people said that it was over secure. So moving forward up until 2040 and pro most likely up until 2140, the hash rate will continue to increase, increase, increase. But eventually when we reach that point where there's no more block reward and it's only fees, we might see people leave the network and we'll see the hash rate drop. But it goes to show you in this chart that we have a lot of room to go down and still be secure. We could even go back to 2017 levels where we, we were between three to six terahashes per second and we would still be considered secure. And people are willing already today to pay these fees. They were in 2017 and they will likely moving forward. That's why big players, financial institutions, hedge funds, are only involved in Bitcoin. Some also involved in Ethereum. Fidelity, digital assets involved in Bitcoin. Backed, created by the same parent company as the New York Stock Exchange, only involved in Bitcoin. Square and the Cash App only sells Bitcoin. And more recently, Paul Tudor Jones, legendary hedge fund investor, is only involved in Bitcoin. The fees today of Bitcoin are so low. I don't think anyone has a problem with them. We saw in 2020 this year, Bitfinex made a $1.1 billion Bitcoin transaction for only 68 cents. And I don't know how to really explain to you how low this is. It doesn't make any sense at all. But even if you told Bitfinex today, you know what, $1.1 billion Bitcoin transaction fee, we're gonna charge you $300. They would say, thank you, that is such a cheap fee. So, so how can anyone have a problem in 2140 sending a $1.1 billion Bitcoin transaction fee for $10, maybe even $50, they'll have no problem at all. And these high fees, you might think they're not possible, but we're already paying them today. When it comes to a bank wire transfer, whether it's domestic or international, the fee can run anywhere from $15 all the way up to $65. So these fees are so high, and we're talking about 2140 about sending a transaction for $5, $8, or $10. And not only are these transactions expensive, they also take some time. They could take one day, they could even take two days. And just to send $1,000, that might cost you $30 in a, trend, in a wire fee. And then let's talk about offshore bank accounts. In front of me, I have this page, and it talks about the setup cost for an offshore bank account. And I'll just read it directly from the page. The setup fee for opening an offshore bank account is usually between $550 to $1,250. This depends on the bank and the jurisdiction. An offshore company typically runs between $1,685 and $2,495. So the total is usually $2,235 to $3,745. So this again, simple, can just be made easy with Bitcoin, maybe pay $50, even $100, even $500, it's still less than $2,000 to $3,000. And then don't get me started on gold. And I do love gold. It's been around forever and it will continue to be around forever and it will always have value. That's my belief, my opinion. But I have a report from February of 2017 that Buns Bank completed a transfer of 300 metric tons of gold and at the time worth $12 billion from the New York Fed to Frankfurt and it took three years and it cost 4.1 million euros. So again, $12 billion worth of gold took three years to send and it cost 4.1 million euros. Again, Bitcoin, $12 billion, you can send it in an hour, maybe two hours tops, cost you $50, maybe in 2140, $100. Again, this is a bargain and people are willing to pay for it and they will pay for it. And even when we're talking about smaller amounts of gold, just sending a very you know, personal small amount of gold can cost you anywhere from $10 to $100, not to mention the added cost of storing it. So this is the most likely scenario. People will pay for fees in the future. We already saw it in 2017, and we saw that if people are gonna make large transactions, not for a cup of coffee or a slice of pizza, but to buy a car or buy a house, They'll have no problem at all spending $5, $10, $20, $30 on a transaction fee. But this answer is not definitive. There are some other possibilities. And one of the other possibilities is for Bitcoin to change their mining algorithm. And again, this is more of a last resort. But right now, Bitcoin works on proof of work, right? 
So Ethereum also has proof of work at the moment, but Ethereum is going through a transition from proof of work to proof of stake, which is more sustainable in the long term. So we're going to see Ethereum go through this transition and we're going to learn, does it work? Is it successful? We might see other projects also have this feature going from proof of work to proof of stake. There might even be a new algorithm we don't know about that comes out in a year from now or five years from now that is superior to proof of work. But the bottom line here is that this is software. It could be updated. It can be changed. So we'll see in the future if worst case scenario, Bitcoin has to turn to another algorithm if the fees are not supporting the network. And another idea, another possibility is, ra is raising or increasing the block size on Bitcoin. Right now, a block is one megabyte and it can fit a certain amount of transactions inside. But if you increase the block size, you can fit more transactions and this can lower the fee for each individual participant. But again, this is a very heated debate in the Bitcoin community and it's not really a idea that's being considered at the moment. Again, this is more of a worst case scenario. So as we can see, the most likely scenario is that Bitcoin will rely from fees. And as you can see, even if the fees in 2140 become $8, $10, even $40, no one will have a problem with it just because we're already paying higher fees today with the way we spend money traditionally. And the halving happens every four years. And many people wonder, why did Satoshi Nakamoto set it at every four years? And one of the ideas is that it's similar to when a, let's say a president or a ruler enters office, they might have four years or a certain time span to make a decision. And if it doesn't work, we get a new leader or a new president. So there still is a lot of time in the Bitcoin space to come up with new ideas. Again, this is software. There have been updates in the past, not so often with Bitcoin because they are more conservative, but other projects have a lot more updates. But the point is things can change. The solutions we went over today in the video, while they might be the most likely solution, in the end of the day, in 2140, none of these might be the solution. There might be something we don't even know about yet. But at this moment in time, Bitcoin is most likely to run on fees alone by 2140 after all the Bitcoin is mined. If you like this video and you thought that it was helpful, do me a huge favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.